knowing you're live. We should be live any second. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Can you hear this? Can so, you hear this? Please say you can hear this. I mean, they should be able to hear that fine. I mean, we are using we we've have it. We've been having all the technical issues today, so we're on Skype instead of Discord, which is why you can't see Discord. And Skype isn't any better than this. Well, it's kind of better than Discord in that it functions uh, a bit. But it's it sort it's sort of all right. It, it keeps, sorts of it keeps, it keeps completely keeps, cutting out. It keeps dropping out. Yeah, it's annoying. Can people hear this? Yes, I've, I'm seeing boobs. Lots of boobs. Um, We're seeing some yeses in the chat. We give, hear. Give me, give me, give me a give stew money. Someone give me a give stew money, then I'll know that you can all hear this. Give stew money on the Patreon. Good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. We're live. It's working. It is working. Oh, no. I think this is the first time we should do it. We should just start by going, chat. What? Did, what did you think? What did you think? Enough about what we think. What did you think? Oh, I'm think seeing. Boobs. I'm. Oh, I'm seeing so much give stew money. I'm so happy with myself. They think give stew money. They think give stew money. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Doctor Who, the timeless children. What the fuck? Okay, what? so there are so many ways we can do this, right? You know, we can uh, we can go like chronologically um, over what what little there was of a plot. Um, we can just we can go straight in with the big thing. I think that's what everyone wants, right? The law, yeah. Um, Hang on, I've just turned my mic up. Is that all right? Oh, you, should, you sound perfectly good to me. Okay, right. Yeah, um, I was thinking, should we save the law till last? Because I think, because the law has been quite controversial, like, so controversial, I think that we should just talk about Brexit instead, because, you know, that's less likely to cause massive arguments. I was just thinking, should we instead talk about how poorly this episode was written? <laughs> I mean, like, even, okay. Even, even like, Chris's recent yeah. standards, this was terrible so even like big retcon aside there was no stories to speak of it was just like a a thinly veiled plot around some exposition that was it yeah a 45 expo 45 minutes worth of exposition dumping about 20 minutes worth of completely empty dialogue teasing you up until the point where there is the exposition dumping it's just like it was so Boring. Yeah. So the plot of this episode is that, well, it, it was it, it would have been boring if I wasn't like still like invested in the world a bit. Like it was sort of like, oh, I can't look away. What are they gonna do? This is the first time watching Doctor Who that I've said "fuck off" out loud. <laughs> I just laughed. I did. I just I, I just laughed so much at scenes which were clearly supposed to be completely sincere yeah i mean okay the, the biggest one of those was when um graham tries to have a heart to heart well not the biggest but graham trying to have a heart to heart with yaz was just such this is what dialogue is <laughs> so hi hi yaz um let me explain to you why you're a good character i mean it's literally in the last episode of this we were talking about how um how like Graham and Yaz, this is like the first time they've spent any real time together that I can remember. It's like, do they even have an on-screen relationship? Relationship? And in this episode, they try to pay off that relationship by having Graham just, they, they think, you know, that may, maybe they don't, they're not going to get out of it. And Graham turns to Yaz and goes, if you don't get out of this, I just want you to, you to know you're one of the best people I've ever met. You're amazing. Uh, you know, and, and just gives her this like big heartfelt speech. And I'm like, do they even have like a, a, a relationship like who are they to each other what's the point of this character it's like i guess they've been in the room as stuff has happened with each other that's about it yeah it and it just it was just so desperate it's just like, please care about this character, please. It was like this will make it feel climactic. It feels climactic now. Well, yay. It's 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 such like um it's, it's almost screenwriting 101 as in like this is the default version of dialogue you put in as to make like a a situation seem dire and to make everything feel like you know a last stand is to have one character turn to another and go 
If we don't get out of this, I want you to know how much you mean to me. That's, like, and what I just said there is better dialogue than was, than was what, it, what was actually in it. Like, I, you okay, know. people keep on telling me that my microphone is playing up. Um, hang on. It is, it's, your, your volume is, uh, is fluctuating hang a on, bit. Hang on, what is it now? It's the Th- same. This is not, this is not my fault, r- really. I, I believe you, because it doesn't normally happen. Because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, microphone input, and it, the levels are quite fine. Huh, I guess it's on my end, then? Oh, God. I don't know. Last time I had this problem, uh, while doing something, it fixed itself. Hang on. Hang on, let me try this. Yeah, it's very, it's very, like, digital, like, it's fluctuating in a very sort of digital way, like... Oh, you've gone silent. Oh, no. He's gone. Chat, it's just you and me now. Yeah, so this is, the like, the worst time that we could have had uh, technical issues for one of these streams. Oh, you're back. Hello? Oh, Hello? my God, you're so loud. Oh, yeah, I'll be loud. I'll kill everyone. Uh, you're, okay, hello. Okay, right, we're back. What were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about, uh, Graham and Yaz being characters. Yeah, they exist. Your, your mic's still doing it, I'm afraid. What the fuck's sake? Fucking piece of shit. Are, are you sure it's on my end and not yours? No, I have no idea what's causing it, but I don't know what I could do to fix it is the thing. Like, I, I only have so many audio settings that I can fiddle with. Okay, is this any better? I don't think so. Oh, God. Are we going to have to abandon this and do it another day? I mean, you, you're listenable. Like, I can understand what you're saying. It just sounds a bit funky. Mm. All right, just uh, right, just keep talking and I'll just interject occasionally. That, no, that, no, I refuse. We must, we must have conversation. Okay, we'll just keep talking and I'll interject occasionally, and if it becomes completely unlistenable, we can just abandon it and do it another day. Yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, this is this is how. Uh, hi guys, we're uh, pro streamers. <laughs> uh, this works. Yeah, this this works fine. So, okay, the plot of this episode um, is basically the only like thread that it has with the with part 1 is that there are still cybermen there and they don't really get to do much i guess they have a subplot of being like completely annihilated by ryan's basketball skills that that was a moment that happened oh that was so funny right i like that, that's the thing i totally tuned out by that point in the episode because i was just brain fucked on the whole canon and the law right yeah I it, I can't even remember like the order that things happened in. So No. It was our, completely incoherent. Our subplot for this episode, we start with um Yaz helpfully brings um like an entire army of Cybermen to where the doctor and Ryan and are, right? Because she's just great like that. Um they the Cybermen, you know, go to attack um Ryan and Koshamas. Ko- Koshamas, by the way, being the best character in this whole thing. He's like, he was good. He was actually good. What Stu, does he how- do, though? He's He says words that feel like a character would say them. The funniest the funniest moment in this episode to me it wasn't even anything to do with all the lore stuff. It was the cyber ship arrives on screen. It's, it's already arrived on screen. You can see it. And you cut to Koshamas looking up at the ship. And he just says, they've arrived. <laughs> What am I watching? I didn't notice that in like the actual thing. Look at that it didn't occur to me to think about that. So it damn like, loudly. I just feel like, yeah, thanks, man. It's just like, what the fuck was I watching? So the side men arrive and uh, there's like a subplot about um Ryan um and Koshamas defending their like their base from the attacking Cybermen. And during that, Koshamas hands Ryan a very conveniently basketball-shaped bomb. (laughs) Now remember, in the first episode of the season, we see Ryan struggling to make a a shot in basketball. 
maybe because of his physical disability, you know, who knows? Um, but in this... So this completes an arc for him, so now he can do a basketball. Yeah, he's overcome his dyspraxia. <laughs> that was Ryan's arc this season. He, he wasn't done, He that, that was his arc. Yeah, he you know, his first arc was uh, learning to accept Graham as a, a paternal figure. This arc is um, not having a disability anymore. <laughs> like, what was this? It's, it's so silly. It's like nothing even like, you know, if there was like, um, if there was an ongoing thing about him being frustrated that he finds like physical activity difficult and then he's shown like just practicing and practicing and, you know, working extra hard to achieve what a lot of people would be able to achieve without that much work. With like, you know, with, like be... a, with, like, with like a with like a montage. So yeah. Like, your best. <laughs> but like, delve into that frustration, you know. Then you could have a a great arc um, of Ryan. I, I don't know if that's how dyspraxia works. If you just have to train harder to do the same things, or what? You know. Someone in the comments has just said, "I honestly forgot that Ryan had dyspraxia." Me too. Right. Right. Yeah. Has, has that been mentioned outside Women Who Fell to Earth at all? Um, well, I think it's, it's like, it's affected him, and like... It's affected him, but it, has it actually been said? I don't think so, no. It might no. have been said when he had, um... It was fairly explicit when they, he was trying to climb the ladder, that that was why he couldn't climb it's, the ladder. It's weirdly subtle for Chibnall, because normally you'd think that Chibnall would have to have Ryan, like, say to another character, by the way, I have dyspraxia. Yeah. Basically just look at the camera and say, I have dyspraxia. To be fair, in the in the focal episode about racism, I'm I'm shocked he didn't look into camera and say, "I'm black." This is a bad thing. Yeah, well, they did say that. Well, they did say that, yeah. But it was, I, I, I don't know. That's the thing. Rosa was at least half competent. This was just like, I I don't even know what the fuck I was looking at. <laughs> it was, it was a mess. I think we can agree. It was a yeah. bit of a mess. I mean, what was that, with that bit where the master is like taunting the lone Cyberman about, oh, you want to become robots? What's that? And it goes on for like five fucking minutes. And I'm just like, okay, get to the point, get to the point now. I mean, I think and I was really sorry. Go on. And, and, and he's just pushing at the Cyberman. And I'm just like, this is completely empty. What, what does it do? And then you get, and then it gets to make the Cybermen as Cyber Time Lords. Oh yeah, that but was they, great. But then they don't do anything. Yeah, they don't do anything at all. The only defense I've seen for that is someone saying, maybe some of them escaped and we'll do something later. And that person was trying to tell me that it was good writing, by the way. I'm just gonna just gonna put that out. The people exist who think this is good. How? I don't know. I mean, I can understand people existing who think that the law changes are good because that's been quite controversial, but I how is this well written? Yeah, you go to, go to like any uh, you know um, official like YouTube page for Doctor Who. I guess there's only one of those, but uh, go go onto the, like the videos they've been posting of this episode, and everyone's like, "Great episode! I really liked it." I mean, are these the like? I guess these are the fans that are left. Yeah. What fans are left? Um, oh my god! Yeah, people are still saying that my fucking audio is being shit. It is. It's it's difficult. It's like it's it's doing a thing but you're very you're you're very much understandable like it just sounds a bit funky is it is that it chat tell me yes no i mean i can understand you perfectly well okay put up with it chat <laughs> <laughs> i mean the worst comes to the worst i can go in because it's literally just your uh, volume levels changing a bit weirdly i can go in uh in post and just edit them to be not weird uh, and, and then That's re-upload an idea. this. It'll be a bit annoying, but it'll be fine. I can do it. Unless, should we, um, okay, okay, I've got an, I've got an idea. Um, go for it. Okay. Take the super chats, um, that you've got so far. Right. And I will record my end on Audacity and send you that over, and you can record your end, and we can just overlap them. Right, okay, so we'll keep doing... So we'll, we'll stay on call and keep doing it now, but you'll hit record on Audacity, is that? Yeah, and then I'll send you the MP3. All right, that makes sense to me. Okay, sorry, chat. Bye-bye. Wait, what do you mean, bye-bye? Oh, I don't know. Because I'm not, I'm not going to be there. Yeah.
Um, right, I, I've hit, rec I've hit record right. on Audacity. See, see what happens now. Awesome. That may or may not be of any use to me. We'll find out. Okay, we'll find out. I mean, what, um, I th I'm just like, I really like a measure of This how, is really fucking annoying. I, I, I just a great measure of... Don't, don't worry about it, man. It's, it's fine. It's perfectly listenable. Okay, good. As long as you can hear me. You're the only person that matters. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's what that's what uh, Graham said to Yaz. Are we, ca are we characters now? Hello, we're characters. Yeah. But speaking of uh, of the of the cyber like of the master talking to the Cybermen, the, oh, there was this moment um, where he kills the lone Cyberman, um, which was uh, which you know it was. I don't even remember. So after um, he he uses his tissue compressor on the lone Cyberman, shrinks him, and it's like this master is like he, this. You know you know how um, in Spyfall there was the episode where he was revealed, and in the reveal he was crap. And then afterwards, he was like, sort of okay. He was hamming it up, yeah. This is this is reveal moment, master. This isn't post reveal okay, master. He yeah, is he's just hamming it up. That's all he's really doing. Like people will point to other uh, bits of new who, especially, and say the master's always been hammy. Um, I think you've just gone silent, by the way. That's interesting. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I'll just keep saying what I was saying. Um, and see, hopefully this will fix itself. Or I'll fix it in the sound settings. Um, what was I saying? Chat, what was I saying? I was saying that... Um, oh yeah, people will point to New Who and be like, oh, the Master's been, you know, always been hammy. Um, always no, you know, he wasn't hammy in the beginning. But, okay, he's, he's evolved to be hammy over time and this isn't anything new. I can see that being a thing that people might... a position that people might hold. But that's never been, like, the good bits of the Master. Um, oh, sure, I can hear you again, I think. What? I can hear you again. Wonderful. I'm back. Hello. Am I? Yes. Right, what What was going on? Um, I was just saying, I think, um... I think children has just killed my computer. That must, it's killed you and your computer, because you're getting <laughs> ill and your computer has died. It's killed me, my computer, everything. It's because, it's because my computer just couldn't, didn't want to stream it. But it's like, okay, so people will argue that the Master's always been hammy. Do you remember the bit in End of Time where the Master yells, DINNER TIME! And then there are two people there who he eats off screen, and then you're like, you just, how it's shot is he go, he yells, DINNER TIME! Jump, then you like, he does something, jumps away, and then it just cuts back to two completely still standing up and completely dressed skeletons of the people where they were. <laughs> I totally forgot that. This is like every scene of this master is like is that level of like crap. Well, not every scene, but he gets a lot of them. New Who has really done the master a massive disservice. Yeah, I watched um, Terror of the Autons recently. I was like, how did that character turn into the the character who in um, the Timeless Children um, shrinks the lone Cyberman down and then go and then like while doing a um, you know 14 year olds who think that they're cool because they can do a jo an impression of the Joker that's a bit cringe oh yeah yeah people doing that all the time back when I was in school the master is like someone doing an impression of the Joker on TikTok he um he, he shrinks down the lone Cyberman and then goes Wah, ha, ha. oh no I should ah, I should have said I'll cut you down to size and then shrunk you ah and it's like, yeah, okay, okay, this is the master now. This um, is what he does. This is what he's for. Oh no. It's like, it's like the most default, this is the kind of thing that a villain says when they're quirky. It's like, we, did, we couldn't be bothered to give him a character, so we made him mad. But I was going to say, we, we can, one way we can tell the sheer impact that this episode has had is that six times the normal viewership has arrived to watch this episode live. And you've gone quiet again. Oh boy. Oh no, six times the normal amount of people will be disappointed. Shit. Uh, I think this is on my end, by the way. So, uh, uh, let's see if we can't fix that. Audio, speakers. Uh, oh no, the speak my, oh, you're back. 
Am I down my back? Am you I are back? back. Oh, my you this are thing back. is giving me fucking headache. It's okay. It's okay. It's well, it's more or less of a headache than uh, the time of children. Yeah, yeah, because I've got I've got audacity up and it's showing my levels and it's all over the fucking place and I think I am just gonna have to leave. Don't leave. Well, I, have to, I might have to restart my computer or some shit because this is fucking. <sighs> if you want to try and restart your computer, then I will. I uh, that's fine. I'll I'll wait for that. I'll I'll entertain. Entertain the chat while you do that. Uh, entertain everyone. Oh my god, fucking hell. Okay, sorry chat, I fail. Yeah, entertain the chat. It's okay, okay. no one can control when their technical problems occur. Chat, what's going on? Right, okay, chat, how did you feel about this episode? Why is the master back? Uh, what's it to kill that? What does it take to kill that guy? People unironically argue that it's the point of the master that he'll like... Uh, die and then reappear without explanation. Look, doesn't that just destroy any kind of stakes for the character? Especially when you put them on like an arc and kill them at the end of that arc. And then, oh no, but he's back now. That was the Skype. Oh, Skype is just, is, I'm just going to hang up. There we go. Um, did someone just say loved it in the chat? What, genuine question. Why? What about it did you like specifically? Unless that's sarcasm, in which case I understand. I'll look out. I'm looking out for your reply. I still don't understand where all that character development with Missy went. Um, Chris ignored it. That's where it went. Uh, I sh it should have been uh, Darkens, not Cybermen. What? I don't know what that means. I want continuity in Doctor Who. To be fair, there's not been much of that for a long time. Jay used Skype? Well, the, we're only using Skype because Discord isn't working. I fucking hated it, LMR. What? Why? Ah, it was sarcasm. Okay. Because uh, the master is shit. Is there, um... Okay, guys. Guys who have seen, um... People have seen the... 1996 Doctor Who TV movie. How would you rate uh, the current master to the Eric Robert master from that movie? Who was who did it better? Because I genuinely am not sure. That's and that's the point we're at. People say I've seen um I've seen a lot the um the sentiment that the master should have been the timeless child and that's the reveal. Um, first of all. This episode reveals um, that the timeless child is uh, is is uh, like is the first time lord, right? You know what? Actually, I'm gonna wait for I'm gonna wait for Stu to do the big lore reveals. But in short, it would not have made sense for the master to be the timeless child because in the master's very first arc, um, or and I guess his second arc with the fourth doctor, his arc with the fourth doctor, he's out of regenerations. Um, the Time Lord Child, the Time Lord Child, the Timeless Child is shown to have like unlimited regenerations. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that doesn't really fit. Uh, but it's not like this fits particularly well either. I'll see, uh, we'll see once Stu gets back. Maybe Discord will work for him. Oh my god, I'm still in a call active with uh, Stu on Discord on his phone. Let's see, hang on. I'm gonna join it and see what happens. Hello. I'm on your phone now. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Oh my god. <laughs> we... Oh my god, I found a different microphone and I'm gonna try that. Awesome. Hello. In the meantime, the call on your phone is still active. We just forgot Hello. to close that. Hang on a minute. Um, the levels seem alright on my phone. Oh, all right now, I've, I've replaced my mic with a, an older, shitter one. Awesome. Work. Let's let's try it. Are you ready or okay. to register call me on Skype? Have you stopped streaming now? I haven't, no. I've just been entertaining the chat. Oh, okay. Hi, chat. Um, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll edit this, uh, I'll edit this for, uh, for the re-upload, and then I will, uh, uh, a link to like a, an uncut version. Working. Sorry? Is your working? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
We were just talking about the um People people a lot of people want the master to be the timeless child. Oh, they, th- they think that would have made more sense. I was just pointing out that it wouldn't, because like the master ran out of regenerations. That and and this episode establishes that the time lo- the timeless child doesn't have a regeneration limit. Or as far as we know of. The regeneration limit was established deliberately by the Time Lords. I think he's gone again. What? No, I'm here. Ah, hello. Uh, is my is my audio on 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 thing then? On the stream, yes, I I think so. It should be. Oh, okay. Should sure. should we just? Uh, do you want to carry on on your phone? Yeah, I'll carry on on my phone if it's working. It's it's working well enough. Okay, I just won't be able to see the chat. You know what um, I can so do, yeah. though, is I can put Discord back on screen. That's a good idea. Discord is better. Fuck Skype. Fuck Skype. Absolutely. Yeah. So, where were we? Where were we? Yes, before my shit died. Your shit died? Fuck. Yeah. Well, I don't uh, know. I'm just... Because technology is failing me, I'm just thinking in expletives right now. Uh, people are saying you're too quiet. I've I've changed the levels as appropriate. Okay, can't he can't he can't he can't 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 can't. Fuck. Okay, so where were we? We were at um. Oh, where were we actually? Yeah, where were we? This this whole thing has been like a massive headache. Yeah. Do you want to do the uh the subplot with uh Graham and Yaz and uh other characters? Um, hiding themselves in cyber suits because that's what I've got on screen at the moment is cyber oh yaz. Oh my god, I hated that. I hated that so so much. Right, so did I, but so I couldn't put my hurt. finger on why. Well, because like what what you imagine inside the cyber suit is like horror. Good. I guess like, yeah, actually you're right. This is, this is just like nothing, and actually seeing inside it just destroys the mystique. It it. It's so clear, like, it, it just... It also, it feels like they've pulled back the curtain and just showed you that this is a costume, anyone can get in it, it's a costume, Cyberman costume. Cyberman, yeah, not real. Costume, so it's not, it's not scary anymore. Yeah, it's like... Uh, <laughs> I want someone it's to make like it. In, it's, <laughs> like in, it's like in Hellbent, where, um... It's it's like in Hellbent, where you know, you know there's that bit there where they're walking through those cave bits and they see a Dalek that's chained up and a Cyberman that's chained up. It's like Doctor Who Haunted House Ride. Yeah. There's Weeping Angel in it's that as well. It's just really bad. Well, it's, um, I want someone I've to make... Stream, I've got a stream up now and I'm looking at the chat. I want someone to make a My Culture Is Not Your Costume meme out of Yaz dressing as a Cyberman. <laughs> but, um, okay, so... Yeah, so what happens is um, Yaz and Graham are, are still on the cyber ship. And so are, like the random characterless extras that they picked up and the episode before. Um, obviously, the whole ship is like it's literally a troop carrier full of Cybermen, and every floor is dedicated to, to housing Cybermen. Apparently, they don't get found though um, because of reasons. They're just they're just able to stroll about, kind of. Um, so what they plan to do is to escape the ship. They decide to dress up as Cybermen by hollowing out a Cyberman and wearing its armor like. Uh, like a like a costume. Which well, I, mean, I suppose we I suppose we established in um. Oh, am I uh, am I not saying anything because my circle isn't green? Uh, no, you're, it's fine for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's because it's um. Oh. Sorry, I lost my friend. <laughs> Lost my I, I really thought that I really thought that Discord had just then stopped working. That would have been good. <laughs> yeah. This episode broke. Oh yeah, someone just put conversion shaming in the chat. Do you remember that line? Oh yeah. I can't even remember the context of it. I just remember it's going, yeah, yeah. Isn't this funny? We made Cyber a parallel. Men, the Cybermen are, the Cybermen are funny, aren't they? What they're for. But it's like, okay, I could they're almost have role. forgiven, like, the whole, like, using the Cyberman as a costume thing if they made it, like, clear that it actually was. I mean, they, they just say that it's horrible to hollow them out, which doesn't count, you know. 
in the same way that the master having a long history with the doctor in in this story uh rears its head in the form of the doc uh, in form of the master going hey doctor remember when we were kids and we did a thing and that's it it's like you know they said they had a history this means they have a history yeah uh they said that it's 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 harrowing to hollow out a side man and then you know like you know, these these are people that have been cut up and stitched together. So, surely there should be, like, you know, horrible bits of blood and guts in, in the cyber suit. Dead humans inside yeah. them. Yeah, instead they just wear it like it's a costume. Plus, surely, like, it's super Which contrived. It's just a costume. Yeah. But it's, like, super contrived that they can just, um... That they, they can just fucking... Oh, they can like, hollow out a suit exactly as they need to, like, none of the, uh, you know, imagine if the arm was just, like, that was a solid robot arm and you can't just take the, uh, interior bits out, because that's the bit holding it together. You know, like it would actually be. Yeah. But the whole suit is, is held together by, like, it's held together by itself and it can be worn. Okay. Okay, show. I just, yeah, at, the, at that point, I just, like, I Farmer my brown, I was just, what? Yeah. Are they yeah. actually doing this? You're a little short for a Cyberman, aren't you? Yeah. They're all supposed to be the same height. How, I'm, how I'm, I'm, I was just making a, a Star Wars reference. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. Uh, sorry, I've... T- my brain's kind of dead because of this episode. I've been out of I understand, week. yeah. I completely understand. This this episode is just like, okay, so what did actually happen? Um, so, Graham and Yaz... Important, the, imp- the important point is, why did that happen? Yeah, that's another good question. That, why does why, it have to be like this? Why is this what the story that Chibnall decided to write with his second season? I really do... Yeah, but- my theory brain is like, okay, so people didn't like season 11 and basically nothing happened in it of sub, like, um, that was that substantial. It was, it was trying to be this like fairly small scale personal story. Uh, and I, th- I almost want to say that, okay, Chris was like, okay, they didn't like that. Let's do the opposite. Let's change literally everything. As if, you know, it's as if, if, as if that's the reason that people didn't like it is the very superficial elements of what it literally just is. See, I think it's I, I think it's the short termist mystery box battle that Moffat was fighting. Because this whole thing is basically just hellbent. It is very hellbent, it's, yeah. It, yeah, it's it's what what it's been doing all season is holding a piece of information like a carrot on a stick in front of your face. And it's going, Ooh, you don't have the piece of information yet, do you? Ooh yeah, ooh, you want the piece of information, don't you? And that's what keeps people watching. That's what kept me watching. And it's uh, and it, okay. kept, it kept it kept me watching until the end yeah. until I realised that what the piece of information was was fucking meaningless. So uh, you'll notice, okay, that um, the hang on, I've got to get the right picture up. I can't find it. What, what I don't know with it. There it is. Um, so you'll notice that the master, right from the first appearance, okay, we um, we of the master, we get he destroyed Gallifrey. Because Time Lord Society was built on a lie, and he knows exactly what's up, but he's ne- not telling the Doctor, right? That's the setup for the season. Something is com- something huge is going on, the Master knows what it is, but he's decided not to tell the Doctor. Why does this conclude? It concludes because the Master goes, I guess I'll tell the Doctor now. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the do- the yeah, Doctor comes to Gallifrey? To yeah. It's, nothing's really changed. The Doctor just comes to Gallifrey sorry, and he's like, here's sorry, my PowerPoint. Sorry, just now that you've put that picture of the Cyber Time Lords up on screen, I'm, I'm just looking at it and... Yeah. Going, oh, oh my god. I swear I drew something like that on Deviant Art about <laughs> ten years ago. They this are a very Deviant Art thing. Now. So, okay. It's like a very expensive fan film. It, it Well, yeah, it is. It's entirely fan fiction. Have you seen the um, the Wikipedia, uh, Chris Chibnall's Wikipedia? No, I haven't. Has someone someone defaced? So it was defaced uh, to be more accurate. 
several times uh, to the point where I think they've locked it now. I don't know. I don't remember where I heard that they've locked it, but um, that's what I've. That's the information that's in my brain, but I don't have a source, so you know. But I do know it was uh, it was changed several times. Um, it it was changed so when you googled Chris Chibnall because the first like paragraph of his Wikipedia article had been changed. When you googled him, it said Chris Chibnall is a an, um, a British writer known for award winning series Broadchurch and destroying long long running t- series Doctor Who, and that's that was the paragraph that you saw when you googled his name. Yeah. But that's yeah, the thing though, it's not gonna it's not gonna be destroyed by this. Well, I guess it can it can bounce back, but the thing is it has to bounce back now. That's the that's the thing though. That's is why I've said that I, it's like I'm in an abusive relationship with a television show. Like all of these people are saying that they're gonna stop watching the show because of Timeless Child or d- because of Timeless Children, or they're gonna stop watching the show because of Hellbent. No, you're not. You're trapped, just, just like I am. I'm sure a lot of people Doctor- have though. If Doctor if Doctor Who's on, I'm going to watch it, and there are more people like like me out there. Yeah. There's apparently there's apparently like three point something million of us, and that's enough to keep the lights on. But I mean, you know, that was ten million at the start of series eleven. Um, yeah. And seven million and people have left. And then that's fallen away to like three, four million, and that's sort of enough to keep 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 it going. And it's it's just like is this all Doctor Who wants to do now? Just Fan service, law, baiting, and setup. But this, the it, fans it, don't like this. Yeah, I know. It's strange though, because as I was watching it, I was just thinking, didn't we all get sick of this? It's this Why is like are you just doing hellbent. It's turning hellbent up to eleven. Hellbent. It, it's the same. It's the same structure. So the the master invites the Cybermen to Gallifrey. Um, they arrive. And then he reveals that he's got he's kept all of the Time Lords' dead bodies because the Time Lords are all dead, and that just happened off screen. Hey, remember what? Remember the ten year arc about getting Gallifrey back? Yeah, that's gone. I mean, a lot of people don't like that arc, but it's this is what like you know this is the lazy way out of like even if you didn't like that arc, it deserves better than this. Like the the results of that arc are still there. Um, it it's almost to a point now where the best thing for the show would be for the next series to wait to start with the Doctor going. That was a weird dream. Fuck. Yeah, I mean, I, I I've pointed this out on Twitter. I have a right around because it's because it's the master here. What if he's lying and he's manipulated the Matrix and this is all a lie? Yeah, and that's what. Um, that's what I want it to be. I mean, it's, it's like my, my head canon it's is... Um, a, it, it's kind of a pathetic explanation, yeah. I know, but I've kind of got it. So but it's a I pathetic episode. It. Like, Well, it is, yeah. There's no explanation for the events of what we just saw on screen that are good. That, that's good, sorry. So it's just yeah, like... That, that's, the, that's the thing. That's the reason why I said let's put the law to one side for now and change this to canon. It's it, it's like I should be able to appreciate at least the storytelling technique, whether regardless of whether I like the answer to who the timeless child is, but I can't because shit. It's not. It's really poorly done. Um, everything about this is poorly yeah. done. Not just the changes. It's like if you got if you got like the best quality of writing, you know, that the show has ever had, and then put this reveal that the Doctor is this like um, this secret special person in that episode. And people, I know that people watch these without watching the actual episodes that they're, they're around, so um, they're going to find out what the reveal is soon when we tell them, but, you know, um, even if you had the best quality of writing um, possible for the show, and then you put that reveal in that story, and it was ble- beautifully woven into the story, and it had huge, you know, Im- an impact on, on, this, on the tale at hand, and it wasn't just an, uh, an entire 65 minutes of, of the Master telling the Doctor a story, for some reason, um, then I'm not sure if I'd get behind it or not. Like, you know, I, I probably, like, I don't, I really don't like this direction, but I can appreciate the good storytelling. But there's but nothing in here. Respect, re- that you could at least respect. I mean, this I cannot respect at all. You know, there's an important, okay, so I guess we'll, we'll say, uh, we'll tell uh, people listening what the actual reveal is. And that is that, um, 
So there's a, there's the timeless child. The timeless child, it turns out, was the first um, person to regenerate on Gallifrey. They're not actually a time lord. They uh, came from a mysterious portal from another dimension, and they were this kid. Uh, and when and this was before anyone had had the ability to regenerate on Gallifrey. This is like Gallifrey's long ago history. Uh, and then this child gets found by a space explorer and brought back to Gallifrey and raised as their own. The child uh, is mortally wounded and regenerates, and this is the first regeneration on Gallifrey. So they study the child and are able to figure out um, how to regenerate, um, and then they, they implant that ability into all Time Lords, but they are the ones to limit it to 13 regenerations, or oh, sorry, 12 regenerations, 13 bodies, um, so that, you know, regeneration doesn't, doesn't go crazy. They, that, that's a Time Lord decision, and it doesn't apply to this original... Uh, regenerating person. This episode reveals that that uh, child was the doctor all along and she had had her memory erased of it. Yay! Yay! Let's remove all limitations from this character. Doctor is basically a god. So... It's just so frustrating. It is. It's like, okay, we have it's unlimited like, regenerations now. It's, I can... It's like, I can... I can sort of see how someone could think that good. Like, it sounds kind of pretty, the idea of being able to live unlimited lives and be able to be able to live all these different lives forever. It sounds good, but it's like, if you remove the limitations, if you remove the... It's like, I understand why people enjoy playing GTA with the cheats on, or enjoy yeah. playing video games with infinite lives, but it's like, there's no challenge, no consequence. Then I, I just end up in this existential vo this existential trap of just wondering what's the point why am i doing this why does anything matter frankly like this is the exactly the wrong time to do it as well because we're on the second regeneration of an entire cycle we've got what 11 more doctors to go until uh, the regeneration limit starts being an issue you know we got it took us the first time around 50 years to get through 11 doctors let people in 50 years deal with this limitation if we get to it yeah, we don't that need to sort it out now. Interesting story instead of just stripping away like this. Yeah, it's like I was annoyed at Time of the Doctor when it um when it tried to take away the regeneration limit, and lots of people were talking as if oh well at least it gets the regeneration limit out of the way, and I was just thinking shouldn't that have been an interesting story? Yeah, I mean you could do so much more with what they actually the did with it. But at least then you were limited to 13 more, you know, 12, 12, I guess 12 more regenerations. That's the thing, though. Has Chris been asked to do this by the BBC who are worried about it? Mm, that's a question. I, that I don't I know. Been, that's a question that I have been thinking because there obviously are like high ups behind the scenes who don't understand what the fuck. Yeah. Because uh... it's like. Because it's like, this This occurred to me recently when I was thinking, I, th I think it was, you, you mentioned it, you were talking about the Toclophane originally, if they couldn't get the Daleks back in season one. Yeah. The, the enemy and it would have been the Toclophane. And I was just thinking, if the negotiation with the state, the state of Terry Nation had fallen through back in season one, if the season one had come out and the Daleks were we'd have all lost our shit because we'd be like, okay, why would they bring Doctor Who back and not have the Daleks in it? And because we wouldn't have anyone to blame we just but the thing is that's nowhere near as like, bad as what's other happened stuff here going on, going on behind it well, no don't no, no but that's the thing when there's obviously other stuff going on behind it so i'm just wondering if chris has been asked to get the regeneration limit out of the way with so that we can have this doctor who thing going forever but even if that's what he was asked to do there are so many better ways to do it well you know, yeah obviously. you could literally just have a throwaway line of dialogue where the doctor says um, oh, I can live forever. Yeah, we, yeah. just have um, all the Time Lords granted me new regenerations on Trenslaw. We don't know how many it was, and then you've just got no limit now. You know, you can just keep yeah. going as, as long as you want with, with that line. Or, Plus, there's still stakes to it then, because if you don't know actually, how that, many... Actually, that would actually be better, because um, then it would say, we don't know how many there are, so the next regeneration could be the last one. Yeah, exactly. So when you don't know so how many... So that's got stakes, that's got consequences. It's this more doesn't. stakes than before, because every time the Doctor gets mortally wounded, uh, don't know if they're going to die. 
I mean, obviously they're yeah, not because it's, it's Doctor Who, but they don't know, which is, you know, the reason that they avoid death. Well, um, there are other reasons, it's, but, you know. The story's some stakes, yeah. Uh, so, um, but the Doctor is, uh, is, is, is like the super special first ever Time Lord now. Yes, I hate that a lot. So do I. And so is Brendan. Yeah, Brendan. Brendan is the super special Time Lord. Do you remember Brendan? He's meaningless now, isn't he? Brendan was, um, Brendan from the last episode, the Irish policeman, he is a, like, cover story that the Time Lords used and replaced some files in the Matrix with files of an Irish policeman and actually it was, like, all allegorical <laughs> for stuff the Doctor was going through. Sorry, I just, I had to burst out laughing as you were explaining it. Yeah. It's so crap. It's like, okay, the Matrix is full of the memories of all Time Lords and also this Irish policeman who did things that are very clearly allegor or allegorical for real events because we can't just delete a file. We have to replace them with the story of <laughs> Brendan. I preferred all the theories that I was coming up with for what Brendan could be. Like, yeah. Brendan is the Rani. They went with Brent basically Brent the worst possible thing. Yeah. My, my favourite of which was Benny is the war Brendan. But this is how, um, like, the Joe Martin Doctor oh, plays oh. into it as well. Oh, God, she's meaningless now as well, isn't she? Yeah, she's pretty meaningless. She's it's just, just a, like, a doctor that works for the Division. Just another one. Yeah, just another it's one like of the potentially hundred, infinite if ones. There's, if, there, if there's hundreds and hundreds of doctors, it's like, what's the point in any one doctor? Yeah. yeah. Who cares about doctors 1 through 13 plus war anymore? I love how we're supposed to believe that uh, the doctor was called the doctor before uh, the memory wipe and everything. Um, and like, but uh, and was like a known entity, but the doctor never found out about this until now. Yeah. And also, the um, of Joe Martin Doctor having a police box TARDIS doesn't make any fucking sense. No. It would have made more, so much more sense for there to be an alternate universe Doctor. Like, what's the problem with just having an alternate universe Doctors? Well, I, like, that was what the. I don't think that there's any problem the with it. Morbius doctors were. Oh my god, the Morbius doctors were in it as well, weren't they? I can't. I hate to say it, but I think that was like actually the only well done part of the twist. It's like, hey, this actually fits in with the law now. Yeah, it's the only bit that works. Yeah. I like how I like how the Doctor breaks the Matrix by trying to wrap her head around all of the <laughs> continuity in canon. Yeah. That's quite so, funny, that is. The Master is, uh, it traps the Doctor in the, the Matrix to show her a PowerPoint work. about the Timeless Child and that she is the Timeless Child. And she's trapped in there as all the <laughs> stuff was... What? Essentially, that's it. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's an episode where, it's an episode where the, do the Master brings the Doctor to Gallifrey and shows her a PowerPoint. Which ends with the slide, you were adopted. <laughs> yes, that is what it is. That's all it is. Yeah, and that's all uh, that's all this really says. The doctor is adopted. What we just what all we need is a line in the next uh the, from the next showrunner that says, I was created in the looms from the DNA of the timeless child. Problem solved. Yeah. Oh my uh, but that is basically the Doctor is adopted, and she's horrified by this. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like, if there are still kids watching this... <laughs> who are, are adopted? They're adopted. It's not exactly comforting, Yeah, it? there's a line where she looks at us and like, WHY WOULD THEY LIE?! Yeah. But then again, I suppose that the, this Doctor is like a big kid. Yeah, That's this Doctor is very childish. Movie. Child, yeah, childish and childlike. Are there still kids who watch Doctor Who and get really into it? I assume. It seems to, it seems to just be like man children like me and you've been watching it. And um, I mean, it's not it like kids are going like to go it. on online, online and talk about it afterwards, I, I guess. Well, that is true, yes. I don't know, the ratings have been quite shit, so that's why I'm thinking. Uh, okay, okay, well, hang on. There was something. Oh, well, Defrosted Robot just put in the chat, Orphan 55. Do you remember when everyone was saying 55 was the worst episode ever? Yes, I remember that. I remember in your yeah. video you said, um, 
Oh yeah, but sh- surely uh, people are going to be calling something else the worst episode ever very soon after this. Right? That's what you, uh, you said something like I, that. I was right. Yeah. yeah. I was right, wasn't I? How do you feel about people calling this the worst episode ever? Well, that's the thing. I'm... That's the thing. Everyone called, Everyone always called Hellbent the worst episode ever for quite a little while. But, and that's, but that's the thing. A worst episode ever is a worst episode ever the most... Is a worst episode ever uninteresting? I would call this a worst episode ever because it was so boring. It, it was one of the most boring episodes I've seen. It was boring, but also hor- horrific. Boring and horrific. He somehow managed to do both. He somehow... It's almost art. <laughs> He's trying to do this. This is his goal. Maybe. I mean, that would explain a lot. This this is how he... This is, explains how he can write uh, this and also Broadchurch, which is apparently good, although I'll have to see it to believe it. Have you seen Broadchurch? Um, I watched the first couple of episodes or so, and I did not get into it at all. Yay, I can say it was bad definitively now. Yay, yeah, I thought... Oh my god, you don't like Broadchurch either? No, I've not seen it. That's that's the thing. I've never been bothered to watch it. Oh, hang on, I can't hear you. That's interesting. You want to go back to Skype? Oh, no, I can hear you again. Okay, good. Has it done the thing again? Oh, oh. I can hear you again. Hooray! The Doctor is the Absorbaloff's daughter. Did you notice the Absorbaloff was in this episode? <laughs> yes, I know. It's... That I, oh I'm fully on board with. Yeah, I, I, I like that, actually. I mean, someone someone propositioned to me, um, would you rather have... Someone um, propositioned Remove you? season 11 and 12 from Doctor Who canon and then replace it with a different writer, but um, under the caveat that they are forced every season to write a, at least one episode about the characters from Love and Monsters. I went, Ooh, yes, absolutely. I would take that. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you could do some fun stuff with them. Imagine actually del- yeah. Imagine a story, right, and I would actually unironically like to see this anyway, where the Doctor meets them, you know, like 15 years on, and has to deal with the horrific thing he did to this woman by turning her into a paving slab. And I'd love to see that conversation. Gets confronted about how their lives it's are shit and she them. would rather die, but she can't be euthanized because she's made of concrete. Yeah, I'd actually love there just to be a season of Doctor Who vis- follow up on all these bit characters who had horrible yeah. shit happen to them. Like, like Adam. Yeah, exactly. Like Dalek and Long Game. Well, there's like, a comic for that. Live, is, yeah, like he's just living in terror that someone's going to click their fingers. But you can absolutely... I, I'd love to see follow-up on some, some follow-ups on some of these incidental characters. You know, reintroduce them because their lives will have progressed on and, and, you know, there'll be new stuff. So new viewers who didn't see the first episode or just don't remember them will still understand what's going on. And I think the Love and Monsters characters would be perfectly good for that. It's not like they're terribly established characters. You know what who they are and what their drives are and... You, they're just in a bad yeah, story. It's just not. It's just. It's just not an episode that many people are gonna. But you can do a good episode with fans. them. Yeah, you can do a good episode with them. It does have its fans. My mom likes Love and Monsters. Hmm. That's that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean that's the thing with the timeless children. It's only a very very specific sort of person who will like. Uh, is it okay to say that that's people with low standards? <laughs> no, but like, uh, no, but like, I'm just saying, the canon stuff that it does is very controversial, and it's only a very specific type of fan who would like this. Yeah. The wider audience and people with just a cursory knowledge of Doctor Who, surely they're just going to be watching this and thinking this is gibberish. Yeah, like this is just it's boring. I don't really understand. I guess you know. It's boring. What? Oh my god, that's that. That's what I realised. Um, okay, uh, you're a big BoJack Horseman fan like me, right? Do you remember yes. Downer Ending, where um, um which what where, which is that? Um, season one, the Wham episode in season one, where BoJack and Sarah Lynn and Todd write his write his book for him while off their face on. Sort he of. He wakes. He wakes up after this massive bender in which they've tried to write his autobiography um he wakes up afterwards because he sent it to princess carolyn while he was off his face and princess carolyn 
Bojack, I read your book and it was gibberish. It was just 277 pages of erotic Doctor Who fan fiction. That's basically <laughs> this episode. <laughs> It is. That's that's the that's how Chris wrote it. <laughs> it's like no, 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 not not legitimately. Don't sue if he's watching this. Obviously, we don't know it's not true though. That's true. We don't know it's not true. Show us on the door where Daddy Chibnall touched. In the in the heart. In the heart, yes. I'm in both the hearts. Oh, that's a reference to that show that that those some people like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just think I was just thinking. So the doctor has two hearts. Yeah. Is that it? And the doctor is the timeless child. Do all time lords have two hearts? That's a good question. I don't. Yeah, I'm sure it's been established that, that the master that, has two some... hearts. Yeah, is that something that they got from the timeless child then? I guess. Maybe. I don't think Chris really thought about that. I'll be real. No, that's not clearly. Did I you mean, think about anything? One fun implication from this is that um, now that we've established that regeneration is purely a genetics trait that has to be sli spliced into you, um, River Song is not Rory's daughter. No. She's the doctor's daughter. Wait. No. Yeah. Wait, how does. Yeah. River Song is now canonically the Doctor's daughter. Let's let's have some fun with that. Yeah. Oh my god! If the what? So she has the ability to regenerate, which is now established to be purely genetic. There's some um, some fun, like who is the parent of uh, who is the parent of uh, of Amy and Rory's child, who turns out to be River Song. Um. And there's like this fun stuff about uh, oh maybe it was the doctor but it wasn't you know that that twist because uh, it turns out that she can regenerate that child can regenerate because of exposure to the time vortex which is what the doctor says but it turns out this whole time the doctor was knowingly fucking his daughter discuss this whole this whole thing is a mess I feel very sorry for whoever writes the TARDIS wiki entry. Yeah, that's yeah, that's something I empathise with. I mean, let's just yeah, write it as if it's ten years from now. What does it say imagine about the imagine... Doctor being half human? Sorry, oh, yeah, on. like yeah, like where does that come from now? Is the Doctor like half human? Is the Doctor a human from another universe? Well, it's like we've all um, agreed to sort of retcon by ignoring that reveal. I mean, I, I bet on the wiki it says that the Doctor is a Time Lord, not that the Doctor is half human. Well, it might say fucking anything yeah, now, course, but... Yeah. Uh, TARDIS Wiki, The Doctor. Let's see. Uh... Oh, it actually does list human there. Oh, okay. So the species Time Lord Human, Timeless Species. Just... That's the thing. We were already treating canon with flexibility. Yeah. It's like, you know, so, ask most fans and the Doctor is not half-human. So what does this episode do? It gives us something else to ignore. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I can think of, because it's like, we're already treating canon with this flexibility anyway, so it's not really doing anything by stripping it away and saying that, fuck it, all of these Doctors are canon. Now. But yeah, it gives us, um, it, it's almost hard to ignore because it's so recent and so big. Um... I guess give it time and we'll just be ignoring it again. Maybe. Yeah, like I said, I've got I've got my head cannon right around, so that's something. At yeah. Least Chris has left me with that. Oh, and at least he at least he came up with a reason for a character to be to be narrating what's going on on screen. <laughs> you know, instead of just doing it just for the hell of it. Until he doesn't, and the doctor starts talking to herself and goes, "Oh, good, I'm talking to myself." Yeah. Well, you got Koshamus, who literally says they're here when you can see them <laughs> on screen. <laughs> what the fuck even was this? 
That's such an overdone thing. Okay, the they're here thing, right, is such an overdone thing that it would still have been overdone to have him say, they're here, and have another character go, yeah, we know, we can see it. That would still be an overdone joke. <laughs> but it's, it's done as if it's supposed to be dramatic. It's funny. We haven't even really talked about the Cybermasters plot yet. The, remember uh, the villains of this story? What did they do again? I can't even remember because my brain was just bubbling out of my ears at that point. So, uh, as the Doctor is being given a, a PowerPoint presentation by the Master, uh, the uh, it's a pre-recorded PowerPoint, sort of, so the Master is free to do stuff as it's going on. Um, as that happens, the Cybermen arrive on Gallifrey. <laughs> You're, you're right there? Hang on, sorry, I might cut in and out for a couple of minutes. Fair Just enough. Keep talking. Uh, as... As the... Well, okay, so the Cybermen are right... I'm gonna... Wait. What are you, what are you doing, man? What? Wait, you, you're making noises. Hang on, I might cut in and out, it's fine. Just keep right. talking. Uh, okay, so the Cybermen arrive on uh, Gallifrey, uh, given the Master's invitation. Uh, they so they, they arrive there the, the master he's been keeping some time lord dead bodies spare because uh, he, he wanted to um, just guess that's what floats his boat then he invites the cybermen uh, it, literally the dialogue in the episode is uh, I kept the bodies in case I might need them like that's what he says I think uh, and then he gives those dead bodies to the it's Cybermen, and they. It's literally like in. Um, it's literally like in um, Rise of Skywalker. Palpatine is returned somehow. Yeah, it is like that. It's like, I mean, it, it, they could just have wrote that. Oh, the Master didn't literally manage to kill every single Time Lord. They could have written that. Did she was that a toilet flushing? Hang on, what? Sorry? Did, did you just flush the toilet there? Yeah, I flushed this episode down. <laughs> Planned that. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Okay, continue. Okay. Um, so, we've got um, the Cybermen arrive on, Gall on Gallifrey, and the Master gives them the dead bodies that, the, of the Time Lords, and this mostly happens off screen. And about... Well, so we say generously five minutes after the Cybermen arrive on Gallifrey, the Cybermasters arrive. And then they don't do and anything. And just stand there. Yeah, they stand in the same room for the whole episode, in basically the same positions. Um, so they are very... The, okay, so the point, the whole kind of point of the Cybermen is that they suppress your individuality and remove anything that made you special from you and turn you into just another one of them that's identical and the same and emotionless. But the, Cy the, the Cybermasters, the Time Lord Cybermen, are specifically designed to incorporate bits of Time Lord culture, which sort of goes against the point of Cybermen. Yeah, like they've got the headdresses. Like the whole... the, the, the chilling thing about... The, the, the whole chilling idea of turning uh, the uh, Time Lords into Cybermen would be... Oh, they're not even like themselves. They're just Cybermen now. That's it. That's what the Cybermen I do. Just, they've taken this amazing culture and they've just turned it into more of them. I just, I just had a thought. The Cybermen, the, the Cybermen are taking the um, headdresses, right? Yeah. They've they've dressed themselves up like Time Lords with the headdresses. What if Cybermen, what if the Cybermen invaded a fire station? Would they wear <laughs> fire helmet? Yeah, that's what they do now. They adopt the the hat of whatever people they convert. <laughs> Into the. That's what you know. In Mo on Mondas, people just used to wear like these hats with handlebars on them, and that's where they got their and original someone looks. Just, someone just said in the chat, and the cyber pope. Yeah, imagine the, <laughs> imagine the cyberman wearing a pope. <laughs> so yeah, we should do limited edition figures of the cybermen just wearing stupid hats. But the the hats are like part of their metal. That they're des they're in the design. <laughs> You've got. Uh, you could have I like. Said it's just something that I see. Just something that you see on Deviant Art. Yeah, it's like, and, and you'd see it on Deviant Art and be like, "Oh, that's neat." I hope it's never in the show, but it's neat. 
Yeah, and it's like, it matters to us, sure, because we're thinking, oh, that's Time Lords crossed with Cybermen. But, as I said, any wider audience watching this outside, and, like, what does this do within the context of the story? Well, it's very, very fan fiction. You know what, I'll tell you something. When I was, like, six, and I wrote, like, Doctor Who fan fiction in my head without, you know, putting pen to paper, I was, like, thinking, oh, it would be cool if... I made in my head a cyber Dalek, which was a Cyberman and a Dalek. That's just what Chris has done now, except with the Time Lords. Yeah. Like, what on earth anyone with just a cursory knowledge of Doctor Who would have thought would have thought while watching this? God knows. If anyone in chat cyber- just has a cursory knowledge of Doctor Who, what did you think watching this? Yeah, like that's gonna, like they're gonna show up in um in the chat in this, but yeah, I mean, cause like the Cyber Time Lords, they're gonna they're gonna be completely meaningless to like anyone who isn't a hardcore fan. I I think that's why they showed the Time Lords like just a bit before they reveal them. Yeah, maybe. Um, but okay, so the plot that happens with uh, them is they stand in a room for a while, they don't really do anything. Uh, the master yeah, shows the that they can regenerate. Over. So he gets one of the Cybermen <laughs> to shoot the other Cyberman, and then it dies, but then, oh no, it regenerates from inside the armor and stands back up. First of all, I think Chris has been reading my fanfiction. Um, yes. Secondly, uh, what what if the metal bits get damaged, though? Yeah... Surely this is less effective than just having a Time Lord soldier. And finally, I mean, you know, there's a battle bit causing them, like, that makes them do, like, that processes them. And surely any shot that kills the Time Lord bit is going to kill them, is going to damage the metal bit that literally encases the Time Lord bit. Yeah, so what's the point? Yeah. And especially what's the point, because before any of these abilities can be used, they're all dead. Probably. Yeah. Unless they show which up somewhere else. Which basically, that whole thing just apes the war doctor in the moment, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Where you got the doctor about to blow up Gallifrey. Yeah. Exactly. It's so much like that, just without any of the build-up or earning it in any way. Yeah. It's like, remember how the first time Gallifrey was destroyed... Um, which happened off screen, but um, like there was an entire arc where we learned that that had happened, and then we learned like the Doctor's entire character is like centered around that for the season, and his arc is to do with it. Yeah, it's treated like a big deal. And even after the conclusion of that arc with the Ninth Doctor, the Tenth Doctor still has to deal with Gallifrey not being there, and it's like it really informs the character. Yeah, whereas in this, Gallifrey got destroyed at the start of it. It came up like once. Yeah, the it's Doctor just... Dune, and now we're here. And then occasionally the, the companions will go, Doctor, you're so distant, where do you go? And she's like, I'm looking at my dead planet, and that's it. Well, not even occasionally, just once. Was it just once? Yeah, in Fugitive of the Doon, it was just once. Oh, shit. <sighs> that's why I'm so angry at this episode, because I was vaguely warm to Series 12. I wanted to like it. I wanted to like it, but I was less warm to it from the yeah, like, from the I've off. I've been quite, I've been quite, I've been quite chirpy. I mean, in most of these, watch our reaction to Villa haunting of the thing. That we were like so happy that we finally got to really like an episode just unconditionally. Yeah. Uh, YouTube it's has like blocked no a message saying wa- it was shit, and I'm just going to allow it. So, yeah, do do that. Yeah, just. I wanted to like it. I really did. It was going to be but difficult I've after the... part one anyway. Now I've, now I've got to the end of this one, and now I'm just looking back at it with bitterness again. Yeah. I'm right back to where I was at the end of season, season 11. Are you excited for season 13? God, no. I'm going to watch it, obviously. Yay. But God, no. I'm trapped. So, um... The Doctor escapes from the Matrix by playing the Doctor Who theme song and imagining other Doctors. Um, yeah, overloads the Matrix by trying to understand Doctor Who canon. Yes. Then um, escapes the Matrix um, and 
then, uh, you know, because the companions have all escaped, they've fought off an entire cyber invasion by themselves. That just happened because Ryan is good at basketball. Um, oh, they yeah, find now, there's, a tar- now oh. there's another TARDIS on Earth that's a house. Yes. Uh, so well, I suppose you could do something with that. The the, the, the companions reunite with the Doctor, and then the the Master agrees to meet. The, the the Doctor packs them all away to go home, like in um, Parting of the Ways or a Bad Wolf, like the Doctor does with Rose. She he he does that. She does that with her uh, current companions, except without the emotional impact. Uh, she tries to send them away, but then um, and then she goes to blow up. Oh my god, we haven't even mentioned the fucking death particle. What was that? Again, my brain bubbled out my ears. So right at the start of the episode, this the um, the lone Cyberman is like, oh, by the way, the Master, let me tell you all about the secret plan I have, because you're a guy I just met. I have in my chest a particle that can destroy all biological life on a planet. All biological life. All of it on a planet. And it's in my chest right here. And he just tells him that. It's like, okay, great, great strategy. Just tell this guy you've just met th- about the super secret weapon that you have um, and the, where exactly where it is. Cool. And he's the only Cyberman that goes as well. And he's like without any guards or anything. So this, the Master ca- could at any point just kill him and take the Death Particle. And that's what he does because the lone Cyberman is a fucking idiot, I guess. Yeah, it's like the cliched supervillain says, now I'm going to tell you my evil plan so you can stop me. Well, it's like, imagine um, a plot... Well, I, well, I can't... I can't, I can't it's, it's literally, it is the cliche, like, stupid version of itself. It's like, oh, the villain it's just decided cliche. to show its enemy its secret uh, and then go on its own with no guards or protection to a place where it could be killed by them because that's what the plot needed to happen. Yeah. Oh, and Jack. What was the point of Jack now? Um, he... Um, p- people remember him. Fan service. Yeah. He was just told that piece of information. He, he He's there because people remember him. Yeah. I mean... See, again, again, I'm having this... I'm having such a negative reaction to this because I've got to the end of the season. I've got all the pieces of information now and I don't like any of them, so now I'm just looking back yeah. with bitterness. Retrospectively, it makes all the other episodes worse. Yeah, build to this. Like, I, like I said with um, Fugitive of the Jadoon, I, I said this back then, it's entirely dependent on how it concludes. Yeah. And how it's concluded, really, really disappointing, just boring shit. 45 minutes of exposition dumping. So now I'm just looking back at that and going, ah, oh, I... It's meaningless again. So, here's a question, right? Big twists, good ones, have implications. So, like, you know, uh, I was going to name some stuff with twists in it, and then I thought, let's not spoil those things for people, but think of something with a twist. Think of a really good thing with a twist, right? And then think, okay, the twist is good because it actually means something to the story. This is an entire season building up to it. Um... What does it actually mean, other than stuff that might happen 50 years down the line when the Doctor um, can regenerate more? Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, it just happens. It's... Yeah, and that's the thing. This, this, You'd think that this proposes, like, limitless possibilities, but it really doesn't, because it just takes away all the stakes from future stories. It's like playing off um, as a huge twist that Graham's name was actually Dave all along and having that be the reveal in the finale like it's something big and special. Just just revealing that information wasn't what we thought it doesn't qualify as a good twist, even when it's big. Yeah. I don't know, just... I'm kind of shaken by this episode because, as I said, I'm, as I said, now I'm just looking. And season thirteen is just going to be more of this. It's going to be it like, is. what is the division? What is the di- division? Oh, for, ten ep- for nine episodes, it's going to be going. What is the division? Where did the timeless child come from? And then we're going to learn that in episode ten of season thirteen. I mean, but then why episode does he ten still of season thirteen it? is going to ask more questions. Like, 
what is the war absorb off? Where did the <laughs> war of, where did the war absorb off come from? And then we're going to find out what the war absorb off is in season fourteen and in episode ten. And I just like I've been here before. What does it take for a showrunner to be fired? Like seriously, how is this not it? Yeah, that's the thing. It the ratings in this season have been quite solid because you've got fickle people like me who just follow the carrot on a stick. But it's bad though. I I know it is. Imagine what the ratings could be if it was good. I know, but it's like this is all Doctor Who seems to want to do now. Like they found pro- a, the perfect problem. trick. I had with... this problem. So go on. I had this problem with Moffat as well, and this episode is basically hellbent again. This this episode has made me so angry that my face is bleeding now, and I don't know why. <laughs> well, I told you I've got ill. Oh yeah, this this episode has my made you ill. Gone down. Destroyed yeah, your episode. computer and made my face bleed. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. So, um... Shall we just all, all agree to watch something else until Doctor Who gets good? I, I know that I'm probably going to end up watching it again, but just... Can, um, can you just oh, it's all time agree for to watch to... something else? Oh, I, I'm, I'm... Death Comes to Time. Death Comes to Time. No, that's Doctor Who as well. I have to get as far away from Doctor Who as possible. Okay, uh, it's time for... Oh, I can recommend you something now, but nothing's springing to mind. See, my go-to recommendations at the moment are bo- my go-to recommendations for things are BoJack Horseman, Years and Years, and Death Comes to Time. And I've and I've watched all of those. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. That's the thing with because season eleven pissed me off so much. It was just like that's the th- no. I'm go- I'm going off in a different direction again. Okay, so season eleven was I didn't like it, but it was sort of a shuffle forward into the future. It was it was dropping all of what happened in the past and just going, okay, fuck it, we're just going to do Doctor and Companions, go do stories. And I didn't like any of them. It was, I just thought it was quite bland and formulaic. Yeah, it was but very. It was, it, was. It, it was sort of a shuffle into the future. This, on the other hand, is a massive step back. Yeah, this is like, this, this is, is like Moffat's like... wet dream kind of thing. This is like someone trying to do a Moffat impression. Well, well, not re- well, not really, because it's so. Well, yeah. Sort of, it fucks around so much with canon and continuity. That that was a huge thing for Moffat. So. But it is. It is I can't imagine like... that many people liking this. Well, yeah. I mean, surely. But at the same time, but at the same time, surely the point of it is to get fans on side. Well, we'll see what the ratings for next season are. I guess. A, that's why you would do an episode set on Gallifrey. Yeah. Exactly. I mean. You could do so much with Gallifrey being back. You could actually establish it as a setting and, like, you know, world build it. And then and then when you do stories on Gallifrey, that's like, oh my god, Gallifrey is at risk instead of the Earth. The stakes are more believable because this is a world that's been built up, but it's not the Earth. You know, you could destroy Gallifrey fe- uh, feasibly within the confines of the show. So any story set on Gallifrey has stakes. That's what you could do with it. That's why they should. That's why I think they should revisit Alien Worlds regularly in chronological order, like time-wise, um, and world build them so that any story there actually does have the stakes of oh my god, this planet that we've established could be destroyed, and that could actually just happen. But they just destroy it again. Yeah. Off screen. It's like, what's the point of this? So why did the master I destroy Gallifrey? Also, how? Um, that's another good question. Because he found out that the timeless child was the Doctor. So why did that make him like decide that. to destroy Gallifrey? He didn't like that, and he got angry. Surely, he if, he was, if that he was going to make him angry things. at anyone, that would make him angry at the Doctor. Because he says, you know, he explains why he's angry. He explains, oh, the Doctor is now special, and I'm not. Surely he's going to take that on the Doctor, out on the Doctor, not the Time Lords, who have nothing to... Well, not, not they didn't cause that to happen. No... Well, he just destroys Gallifrey because I guess um, he wanted to. Because it was there. Yeah, it was around and he was annoyed. So he destroyed it. And now it's gone. Uh. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think Chris, I need to Chris, Why did Chris decide to destroy Doctor Who? 
I think I need to establish some boundaries with Doctor Who from now on. Because, I, as I've said, I'm not going to stop watching it. It's just this thing that's always going to be in my life, like, forever. So I think I just need to establish some boundaries. Like, with season 11, I wanted as much distance from Doctor Who as possible. And then season 12 started again, and I found myself into it again. And it was quite unhealthy now, looking back. Um, so now that season 12 is over again, and I'm just... Now that the season's over, and I'm just, like, miserable and pissed with it... Maybe I just need to... I'm only allowed to give a shit about Doctor Who when it's on. Like, because cause the anger that people like me have been feeling about it is unhealthy. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Oh, by the way, chat, I'm who noticed the Doctor little Who angry again? faces in the thumbnail? <laughs> Before this started, I edited the our avatars to be a little bit sad. Yeah. But we haven't... Okay, we haven't finished the plot yet. No, we haven't. Wait, plot? There was plot in this episode? Well, the, apart from the PowerPoint, there were, there were a couple of things happening in the background that didn't really matter. Oh, yeah, because I, I, as I said, my brain bubbled out my ears during the PowerPoint, so I so, stopped paying attention. So, um, the Doctor, the Master killed the uh, Lone Cyberman and got the Death Particle. Actually, no, just left the Death Particle around for the Doctor to find. Uh, the Doctor finds the Death Particle and set, rigs it up with an explosive so that it could go off and destroy all biological life on Gallifrey. Right, and that includes the Cybermen because they've got biological parts. Which is actually fairly well woven into the story exposition-wise. It's some of the better exposition in there because, the, yeah, well, the Lone Cybermen is like, we have th something that destroys all biological life, and the Master's like, you know that includes you, right? That's okay. That's fairly decent as a way to communicate that to the audience. But the Doctor has a death particle now, and goes to destroy all of the Cybermasters, uh, which are the Time Lord Cybermen, that's what they're actually called for some reason. And um, because if the Master gets out with that army, then, uh, uh, you know, that's a big problem. So she goes to destroy it all. Um, she send it, she, and she sends uh, her companions away in the TARDIS, in, in a TARDIS, sorry, uh, as oh, that's God. going on. That also made me laugh, that bit. Where the TARDIS where materializes saying, as a house, or...? No, 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 the bit where um, she's looking over all her companions and random incidental characters and going, I do this for you, my fam. And I was just thinking, some of these characters I met last week and they don't <laughs> fuck all in the story. To be fair, Koshabas is actually better as a character than, like, Yaz. I believe yeah, him yeah. more than Yaz, and I've spent two seasons with her. Yeah, I've, it's like I met some of these characters last week, and then I'm fuck all in the story. Same with the companions, actually. My fam. Yeah. You know, I feel the emotions of the family because she said the word. It's the my fam. Remember when Graham was opening up to you about his cancer, you were like, and you were like, I'm a bit awkward. These are the people I care about. Oh. That's their relationship. Yay. Yay. Um, so the Doctor is now um, standing in a room with the Master and all the Cyber Masters and has the uh, uh, the the Death Particle and, is, and the Master is baiting her to do it and destroy everyone and she's hesitating. At which point Koshamas arrives and takes it off her and decides to do it himself. Uh, and he gives her ample time to run away and get free first instead of just blowing it up, which I, I fully believe he would just do it Im immediately. He's like, oh... Better let this person I don't really know get to safety first before ensuring that the goal I've spent my entire life fighting for gets completed. When they will absolutely just shoot me before I can do it, and they should have shot me already for some, but they haven't for some reason. Now, uh, one thing you'll have noticed earlier in the episode is that there are loads of scenes run it where uh, characters run from Cybermen and they miss like every shot because of course they do because they're the main characters. It's like, it's like you know they are. It's not like they're difficult targets. They're running in a straight line from Cybermen with a clearer line of view for like a long time. And they just miss every shot. In this scene, though, the Master finally gives an order to shoot Koshamas. Um, and all of them hit literally every shot. There is not a single miss <laughs> in, in the entire thing. And then Koshamas dies um, and he falls to the ground. And then in one of the crappiest moments of the episode... After he's dead, it just shows his hand, press the button anyway, despite him being dead. And then it blows up and all the Cybermen get destroyed. Yay. 
So you, you were going to say the something. Wasn't, the episode wasn't ended there, there though, was it? No. What? 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 Do you remember the 10th Doctor era? Yeah, I remember that. That happens again. Every minute of this episode felt like six. <laughs> That's very specific. Yeah, time just crawled by. That's oh, yeah, why they call yeah. it the Timeless Child. Yeah, and, uh, okay, get to the bit where the Doctor's going, what, what, what? So, yeah, yeah. The, like... yeah we're, we're about there. So the, the, the villains of the episode get blown up. Of course the Master is going to escape somehow, but, you know, it's really silly that they didn't show an escape method for the Master. Like, come on. If you want to keep the Master around, don't fucking show him in ex unescapable death situations. Uh, the Cybermasters all get destroyed before they can do anything. They were just there to look cool for a while and then die. Um, but uh, the the companions arrive in their TARDIS um, and arrive on Earth. And the TARDIS is uh, disguised as a house. And they get to live on Earth. And the, and the Doctor finds another TARDIS. And she gets um, she goes back to her own TARDIS. Uh, and abandons the TARDIS that she used to get there. She goes and finds, uh, she goes and finds uh, a TARDIS. Uh, hang on, hang on. She, she leaves the TARDIS, goes back, gets back in her own TARDIS, and at that point, loads of um, Jadoon teleport into the TARDIS, which apparently they can do. Uh, yeah, how? And send her to That's... prison in the Shadow Proclamation. That was so dumb. How yes. did Jadoon get inside the TARDIS? The, the stupid space rhinos that control the police can Just because. teleport into the TARDIS. But it's like, um, but the the doctor goes, what? 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 Like in the Tenant era. They also ended it like Rick and Morty season two, with the main character getting put in prison and that's how they get separated from the, main, the, other, the other character. But that was good though. <laughs> That was good, though. Yeah. I don't know. It just occurred to me when I was watching it. Um, and then, okay, what else? Uh, is Okay, so is guessing... there anything else to touch on, then? No. I'm guessing the series finale is going to be about, like, I don't know, the Doctor breaking out of that prison and there's Daleks there for some reason. Oh, yeah, we've got, um, we've got one more episode to come. It's called Revolution of the Daleks. I guess it's going to have Jadoon yeah. in it. You see, this is a problem so small for, like, the Doctor, just her being in a prison, that I would believe that they would resolve it off-screen. Like, that's the amount of problem that it is. They, if they resolved it off-screen for next episode, I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. No, they won't, though, because, like, why would they put it in otherwise? Well, to be, I was about to say that, and then to be fair, I just remembered that Chris is running this. Oh, yeah, Chris. Because Chris. That's, that's going to be your excuse for anything. But um, okay, so our next episode is called Revolution of the Daleks. Do we know when it comes out? Is it going to be like Christmas or New Year's or something? Either Christmas or New Year's, I think. The date's listed as twenty twenty, isn't it? So it must be Chris. It must be like New. Year's it could Eve. be like an Easter special or something. No, I don't think so. I think it will come out towards the end. Of They've the already year. filmed it. Or at least filmed some of it. Yeah, because that's where... Uh, remember the set photos of the Daleks we saw? I don't know. Because, like, they usually put episodes... They usually used to put episodes that they wanted everyone to pay attention to on, like, big days where they know yeah. that people have nothing better to do, like Christmas. Oh, by the way, I can finally tell you what the leaks were. Oh, okay, go on with the leaks. So the leaks that I went into this season knowing was that... Um, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be true or not. Because leaks have, for Doctor Who have been wrong before, but leaks recently have been like spot on for everything. So I wasn't sure, but as soon as the um, Ruth Doctor showed up, I was like, yeah, it's going to be true, isn't it? The leaks were that Chris Chibnall was adding a full cycle of regenerations before the first Doctor. Which he kind of did. Not a full yeah, cycle, though, just infinite ones. Yeah, so it's like everything's canon now. Oh, wasn't there Curse of Fatal Death in that Matrix? well was it i swear i'd remember seeing I, props to them for that right. to be fair yeah infinite lives everything 
Does that mean anything to anyone else, though? It, Does curse, it matter? Curse of Fatal Death is amazing. Go watch that. Yeah, it's better. It's much better. Oh wait, so Joanna Lumley is the Doctor is canon now. She's was my she's my top pick. Yeah, so she is a Doctor now. Yay! Officially, in one of the timelines. The Why Morbius Doctors were been, in there. Why couldn't it have just have been alternate universes? Someone's saying What's that it point? wasn't in there. Yeah, we, well, the point oh, yeah, is that... I don't know. The point, it oh, was someone in the this. chat just said, the, por the porn parodies are canon now. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one called? Dr. Lou and the Farlex or something. So, I think there's one called Dr. Screw. Oh, Dr. Screw, I know that one. That's the only one that I'm aware of. And then, yeah. uh... I mean, I can't think of anything else. So, season 13 is just going to be like asking, where's the timeless child come from? Well, the Schalke Doctor's probably canon now, I guess. Oh, yeah, that too, yeah. I mean, they could have got Richard E. Grant to just, like, pose in his Schalke Doctor costume in, like, in live action and put that in there. That would have been neat. I'd have liked to see thing. that. That's the thing. Who cares? I enjoyed Scream of the Schalke for what it was. I didn't care if it was canon or not. To be fair, yeah, fans, um, the only people who are going to care about that are fans who aren't going to like the story anyway, so fuck it. Yeah, like so hardcore fans. Again, who's this for? Uh, it's it's. I almost feel like I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know who's gonna like this. I, apparently, people do. I don't understand, mm. but they exist. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in the chat said my but fanfic the... Doctor is canon. I mean, I mean, the Doctor, the do the Doctor's backstory, the Time Lords, that whole sense of mystery had been had gone. Over a while, because they time yeah. used to be this mysterious backstory race for her. But then, uh, as time went by, we learnt more about them and just sort of started to become dull. So this could be... You could see this as an attempt to refresh the dusty old canon. Yeah, but... But, bad, but, just, repla but just replacing it with another... It's just like we've replaced the Doctor's mysterious backstory with another one. All they need to do is just show like some big mysterious thing on Gallifrey and never explain it, and that would be enough to reignite the mystery. Yeah, exactly. It's just like why do why bother doing this like, instead of just telling new story? Just like have um, just tell new do a, do a pulp that do a pulp fiction briefcase. Into. Never show a thing, but have it like be related to the Time Lords in some way, and have it be like in a big room in Gallifrey and never show it, and have someone who's after it or wants to destroy it or something, and that's how you add mystery. Yeah. But the other thing, I'm okay with like mysteries going away after like 50 years of it being mysterious. Yeah. Like, mysteries getting solved said, is okay. As I said, just do something else. Go yeah. away and do other stories. Uh, so Something so... new. Something that like the wider audience might be able to get into again. Instead of this and there are insane so gibberish. There are so good stories you can do. Like, how underutilized are the Cybermen as a concept in the main show? They've never even, like, done something like, um, you know, their prerogative is to survive, not to conquer. They, they've they never even done something like trying to recruit humans with propaganda. How cool would that be as a story? Yeah. We must survive. Yeah, all the most interesting Cybermen stories are big finish ones. Yeah. Almost all. The, 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 imagine you could do something really dark with them, like... Um, finding places that, like, you know, buying humans from human traffickers. Like, that could be crazy good. Yeah, that's an idea. Instead of whatever this is. But, is that... Have we, have we, have we done it now? Have we done this? I think so, yeah. So, uh, I'll give... I think I've got it off my chest. And Chat. now I feel... Now I feel deflated and I need to have a long lie down because, for one thing, I'm ill. Another thing, this. I think I'll give chat a, like a moment to tell us if we've missed anything that they want us to talk about. Uh, I'm waiting for a Starbucks Weeping Angel story. I don't, I don't get it, but I agree. The Lone Side Man was interesting since uh, he people, had his emotions. Saying... Sorry? People are saying things like cyber semen, so I'm thinking we're dumb. <laughs> I just saw that. 
Uh, yeah, people are saying it's done, chat. So, um, I guess super chats In then, conclusion. and we'll we can call it um, a day and a series. But this, I guess, podcast isn't going anywhere. We're just not going to be doing like the regular weekly thing because there aren't going to be new episodes. At least until my computer stops. Yes, but we're planning on doing the TV movie. We might do Dalek. And my immune, and my immune system. Yes. Do you have any? Do you have any? Uh, you'd like to do in the off season? Uh, I'm up for doing whatever. Whatever you're up for doing, I will. Like, as as I said, as I said, I want to set boundaries with Doctor Who, but I, I'm not going to um, totally off it. Oh, that makes sense to me. I never. Am. But do you have any any top picks, or is it all up in the air? Oh, Dalek would be good. Well, I I love Dalek. Dalek's like especially my favorite since, especially one. Especially since, especially since the target normalization of that's out. Yes. That's coming. It is. So okay, we got a fair few super chats today. This might take us a while. Yeah, probably to. A lot I mean, of that was probably to do with my technology farting. It's also probably due to like the six times regular viewership because this episode really. I mean. You know, it people it, it caused things. Okay, it did, didn't it? so we've got the first super chat says give Stu money. Thank you for a better microphone. Uh, here are the five euros we agreed upon. Do what you promised on Twitter. This is a person who said, um, if I give you five euros, will you do a stream naked? Um, and I'm obliged to now. But you know, I I I normally don't show my my face on streams. I don't have a camera for that. Normally, just, so just just say you are and take. No, I'm gonna pr- I'm gonna follow through. I will do a stream naked. Just lie, but Jay. Lying no, I don't. It's fun. I'm n- being naked isn't that hard. I can do that. I don't have to lie no, about that. No, it's not. I'll just turn up my heating for a while. Maybe put just a blanket over me. It's fine. Uh, have some, you obscene beggar. Oh, is this money? It is. Hooray for money. We've got, it was bad. I feel like I wasted my time. I legit might make a rage video on it at some point, uh, as I did for Hellbent. Go for it. Do it. Uh, rest in peace, Doctor Who. Here's hoping they stop defiling your corpse beyond what they have already done. Also, the kick Jay not, and the, gives you money. Sorry, the doctor's not. The doctor's not dead, though. The doctor will never die. I think they're, they're speaking of, uh, of the show itself. Yeah. It's not dead, though. It's still going to be there. Well, it's like... Shuffling on. I mean, define dead for a piece of media, because I think resurrecting dead media is possible. So, if it's it's ever going to be dead, it would be now, I think. I don't think this is better than the Colin era. No. And the TV Colin era, I mean. His, His audios are great, and he's my favorite Doctor. Maybe. He's one of them. We've got someone here saying, I like TLJ. I like TLJ. Wrong! That's not allowed. It's not the best, it's not the best thing in the world, but I quite like it. But don't you know that's forbidden? I'll do whatever I like. Okay. Remember 13's love for custard creams? Chris didn't. Oh yeah, was that a thing? I think so. I mean, the TARDIS has a custard cream dispenser in it now. Does it? It does. That was shown in uh, in Woman Who in the uh, Ghost Monument. My brain just sort of hits a raise every time I watch these. I understand. What's worse, Doctor Who or Stu's mic? Um, my mic. Because it gave me. A- well, I think we were explicitly saying that um, your mic was listenable at least. That's true, yeah. That and we have established that Doctor Who is what destroyed my... Hmm. Yeah, your, your mic is Doctor Who's fault. It's, yeah, it's a chicken It's a chicken in the exit. As is your health and my face. Yes. We've got um, Doctor Who OBV. I'm not sure if that's like abbreviating obviously or what, but that's what it says. Any interpretations OBV. of that? Doctor Who... Um, Doctor Who organic breath vasectomy. Let's go with that. Yeah, that one. Doctor Who organic breath vasectomy. Uh, I agree. 
Next season tagline. What is truly Gallifreyan? Absolutely nothing. Everything is copied. This season's tagline was space for all, which I thought was just a bit weird. Oh yeah, space for all. I think I, I almost want... I, what I, does I, that mean? I think they're trying to push like an inclusive angle. It's like... I don't yeah. know. Maybe, but what about this season was inclusive? I mean, it, it, it was diverse. I mean, the, I mean, the only political things I took away from it were recycling and look after the environment. Yeah. It's like um, there was one instance in this episode where I was like, I mean, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not one to complain about diversity in media. I don't care. But the way they did it, I didn't like because like, they showed um, the timeless child regenerating into basically every conceivable race and gender, and I'm like, okay, so is it actually just a coincidence that the doctor happened to be like thirteen white dudes in a row? Because like oh, people are posting more people are, people are posting more taglines in the chat. There's one like, oh yeah, do you remember this one? It's about time. So I'm, I'm oh yeah, that was uh, I mean they also had a trailer where they showed Jody literally breaking a glass ceiling, which wasn't particularly subtle. No. Space above and beyond. But it's like um. I what I I'm fine with I I like the idea that um. Now in the second cycle of regenerations, like the doctors, I, I want it to be explained in, in a way that yeah, okay, the doctor was um, most time lords stick to maybe like one race, maybe two races, and one gender. But it's uh, on rare occasions like they can change, and then you know from that point onwards it could be you know they can change more fluidly, um, and that's why the doctor was you know thirteen white dudes in a row and now could be anyone, like. I want that explanation to be there, but now I guess it just contradicts that that, w that was my headcanon, but now showing the Doctor was basically every um, colour and creed under the sun before uh, before William Hartnell it's just like, oh, okay. okay it, ju it just spits in my face, my headcanon I guess, which I didn't personally appreciate. We've got, uh, you see that, like, uh, 600,000 viewers dipped out of BBC One when the finale came on and came back afterwards? Is that true? Holy Is shit. That true? If I that's mean, true, that's I hilarious. Heard rumor, I, I heard the rumour that Antiques Roadshow got me more viewers than this. Oh, that's funny. I don't know if that's true. Um, if anyone's got a source for that, can you tweet it at me? Because I want to clarify that. Uh, we've got gifts you money. He clearly needs it for a new computer. Yes. Uh, J.I. Milk, you also rags had a bad take. I know I've heard of this. Um, he said that uh, Avatar The Last Airbender is terrible. That's the thing that we could watch. It's not Doctor Who. Oh yeah, I never watched any of the show. People kept telling me to. I'm like this, this uh, him saying this has caused like a huge controversy in their in their community. I'm like, I'm like I remember when I caused controversy by saying Spaceballs was boring and that. I'm like, doesn't doesn't look like uh, you know. Remember when when that was the controversy? Like this, well, their that community is exploding now. I I think it's just not very funny. Watch the chat react yeah, to that. I, was, I like I liked it when I was a kid. I don't think I've seen it since I was. The thing is, it's one of those, um, a lot of people cite the Seinfeld isn't funny trope, where people will um, go to Seinfeld expecting this comedy, like, classic, but they go into it and they, they've seen all the jokes in other places before and they think it's just old, tired, and cliche. But at the time it came out, none of that was old, tired, and cliche. And that might be, you know, my, my take on Spaceballs. That might be why I don't like it. Yeah, it could be. I think it is. It's very, um, it's humor that doesn't really appeal to me. It's, it's, uh... It, it's only one layer of parody. It's it's very it's just straight parody. Mm. We've got uh, I DM'd you a message on Discord to fix the law. I'll uh, I'll have a look. Uh, my head cannon. I think Stu uh, Stu should see this. I've got a nice simple way to explain away the timeless child. Uh, 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 for those who aren't fans, the timeless child isn't our universe, uh, Doctor. So Gallifrey is built upon the Doctor, but not the mainline one, but an alternate universe, a.k.a. Ruth. That works fine. 
Yeah, just an alternate universe. Like, why would that be such a shit explanation? I mean, I like the the explanation that the Doctor was made in the looms from the DNA of the Timeless Child because, like, a lot of uh, a lot of them would be, uh, you know, made made in that way. Mm. Uh, then we've got uh, show don't tell <laughs> nah fuck that yeah this episode has a powerpoint yeah got Doctor Who series 12 and unbridled rage do it I'm making the video um, my plan at the moment is to try and release it at the same time as um, revolution of the Daleks comes out that's my plan so, so, yes. I'm going to do season 11 in the same video as well. We've got someone... I unironically love Love and Monsters. Oh, unironically like Love and Monsters, sorry. I'm sure you exist. <laughs> Who in chat likes Love and Monsters? See, I watched it again um, when I was making a top 10 worst episodes of Doctor Who list thing several years ago. And I didn't hate it. It's not awful. It's oh, it is awful. It's it does a lot of things poorly, but it's, it's kind of cute. It's it's got its cringe. That's what I found. But yeah, it's, it's not got its cringe, but it's but it's also got its charms, and I don't know. I just I couldn't hate it. I guess you. So um, we've got this might actually be worse than the finale to Game of Thrones, but I'm not sure yet. Have you seen that, Stu? Uh, no. I gave up watching Game of Thrones around the time that Joffrey died. I've not seen it either. Because I, I just thought, okay, that's done. Uh, Paul, so what's much, worse? So much of the show have been about Joffrey, so... so okay. Harry, you know what? I'm going to do a, a Twitter poll. What uh, ended worse? Uh, go go to my, tw my Twitty tweets and answer my poll, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to add in uh, G Game of Thrones, Doctor Who, uh, tw Doctor Who Series 12, and I'm going to put in a uh, sequel trilogy as well. Ooh, that's a... Uh, go, a go answer my poll and we'll, we'll get back to you by the end of the Super Chats. Yeah, I said that Spyfall was... I said that Spyfall was his Force Awakens. This is definitely his Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, actually, I'll agree that Spyfall is a Force Awakens because it's like nice and fun when you watch it, but it doesn't really stand up to huge scrutiny, and it sort of also ruins some of the world building, or not world yeah. building, but the Master's arc. Uh, we've got what are your favorite and least favorite versions of the Doctor Who theme? Both of you. Uh, also, which Doctor has your favorite uh, light motif? I don't know what that means. I'm gonna Google it. But Stu, what's your favourite and least favourite theme? What theme is in the music? Yeah. Um. Well, I quite like the first one, the, like the original '60s one. It's just very spare and. I get it. It's the only one that really sounds creepy. See, uh, I I, I get. See, I... Is, it, is it sounds more bomb bombastic and orchestral in the new show? It sounds more yeah. fam family friendly, whereas the '60s one is kind of creepy. See, I think the the perfect one that um the per there are two that perfectly combine what the show is for me, and that's you've you've got the excitement, you've got the running and the uh you know running down hallways excitement kind of stuff, but you've also got the slow building mysteries. I think there are only two versions of the theme that capture both of those moods. And that's uh, the Glynn theme and the, I can't remember who wrote it, the uh, Sylvester McCoy's one. So that's uh, Trial of a Time Lord theme and the Sylvester McCoy theme are both glorious. Least favourite? Probably the uh, uh, first Matt Smith one. It's just so, it's it's got choirs in it. Man. What's your least favourite? Stu, are you, are you, are you around? Okay. Uh, hello? Sorry, I'm, uh, so, sorry, my illness. Okay. I, I understand that your brain is dying. I I won't... I won't... Um, it's okay. Let's just go with that. Do you have a least favourite, though? I can't think of one. The current one is pretty good. It 
like the yeah, current I music like is the current one. yeah it, it's sort of um it's epic and bombastic while still having the era of mystery to it which is close to what i look for in a doctor who theme i it's it's, it's up there on my favorites uh shame about the rest of the era mm. we've got um Oh, and favorite light motif. I googled it. It's like the you know the theme that plays in, in the show for like the the character when you know. So, uh, it's like uh, the I am the Doctor music. You know, like the dun 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 dun. Oh, I got so sick of that. Could, yeah. While. So it's it was it was a bit overused. My favorite yeah. is. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I remember that. They did that all the time. Yeah, but it's so good. It's such good music. Uh, and we got, we've got, we've um, got. Do you have a favorite one of those? I'm trying to remember all of them now. I don't quite like the oo woo. Did you just say oo woo? Oo woo woo. Oo woo. Because I can't reach that. Out. I've just put the oh no back on the screen. I think it's the most appropriate picture to end on. Yeah, this episode was not. And then we've got uh, give Peaky Blinders a try. Good character writing. I may well do. It, it looks neat. Oh yeah, people keep recommending me that. Uh, I know I, I uh, have access to it. Uh, we've uh, I bought the series. DVD for my mum for her birthday because she liked it. Uh, it's not on Netflix. So it, it, it's available. It might be actually. That they'll have access to it then as well. We've got uh, the division. The Time Lords have uh, naming like the Time Lords have naming like the moment the Eternal Loom. I guess the division. I mean, the Time Lords also have something called the CIA though. Oh yeah, the Celestial Intervention Agency. Isn't That's that the basically one. What the division is. I guess. Well, we don't really know anything about the division and what they do. Oh, it's just more baiting. They they go around and they do stuff in the universe. It's the unofficial, like, Time Lord swore never to interfere, except the Division, which is secret. Got, um... Come on, wasn't the point of the show before Bigoted Whites, the character was just diverse, and that's how it feels in terms of shoehorn? I mean, the char- the show does a focal episode on racism, and yeah, there are there there were bigoted people in like Alabama, and whenever that episode was set, I can't think of any other examples. I mean, you know, obviously it lacks nuance. It doesn't. It doesn't. You don't have any of like you don't have any characters in that setting who are like just going along with it because they feel like they're obliged to, or you you know you don't dig into why they're racist. But um, I don't know. And then I think finally we've got, um, it's not that Rags has a bad take, it's that he won't justify it and then continue to belittle people uh, and treating them like children without justify it while acting like a child and spurging. I believe that he would do that, um, but it's like, it's it's him going over the top, I guess. I don't know. He likes to troll people. And that's the, that was uh. the last one. So, um, any closing words, or shall I let you uh, die in peace now? This episode was bad. I agree. That's it. That's my closing. Goodbye, everyone. It's been a fun bye, bye, season, everyone. and we'll see you bye, again bye. soon to do, like, some other stuff. Bye. bye. My brain's melting. <laughs>